Let's uh, dial in. Let's go to London right now and dial in Piers Morgan. He's got a big program starting today on uh, Fox Nation. Good morning to you. Good afternoon good to you, Mr. Piers. Well, it's good, it's good afternoon from here. Good morning to you in New York. All Thank right. You. Good We're going to talk about your special with Trump, which is getting amazing publicity. But first, let's talk domestically <laughs> about uh, publicity. And we know that the president's poll numbers in this country are very low. However, given similar low poll numbers, top guy at the White House thinks that Joe Biden can get reelected. His chief of staff, Ron Klain, has tweeted this, Piers Morgan. An interesting observation, just an FYI. President Macron appears to have secured a double-digit victory over Le Pen at a time when his approval rating is 36%. <laughs> hmm. Joe Biden's uh, rating right now, according to the latest average, is 41%. So what say you, Piers? Uh, I say they're living in cloud cuckoo land, and if they take that mentality into the midterms, they're going to get one of the greatest shellackings in the history of midterm elections. Um, I think Joe Biden's in big trouble. I think his presidency has been very weak so far. His leadership has been uninspiring. I think surging inflation and some catastrophic decisions on the international stage have left him very vulnerable. And, you know, very, you mentioned my Trump interview. Very interesting how confident Donald Trump is about the resurgence of the Republicans, mm -hmm. both in the midterms and indeed in the next national election, and with good reason. So if I were the Democrats, I would not be so cocksure that they can replicate anything that's happened in France. Very different system there. Uh, I think if you look at the, the sheer numbers here with Joe Biden, you would say right now the Democrats are in big trouble. And if I were them, I would take their head out of the clouds and get real. Remember the movie Dumb and Dumber when he says, oh, so you're saying there's a chance. Maybe I could date you. And she says, like, one yeah. in a million. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. Because listen, they're I, I, listen. Go ahead. I was going to say, I have, I have a chance of sleeping with a supermodel tonight. It's not going to happen. <laughs> It's just interesting that they, right. they, they're they highlighting his poor approval rating to say that he has a chance. I just think it's, it's completely delusional. And it's the kind of thing you say when you think that some people around him at the White House have gone literally bonkers. Because that kind of message, if I was a Democrat, would be like, what? Sorry? Right. We're doing so badly, it's good. Right. Um, I just think it's delusional. And I think that it's also it's sort of covering over the tracks, really, isn't it? Because we can all see what's happening. You know, I think that the, America has a, a situation right now where many millions of people are really feeling the pinch now from uh, right. rising prices, from surging inflation, particularly at the, the gas pump and so on and you can say all you like that things are going well but when people are experiencing in real time the pain of what is happening and and they can't even feed their kids in some cases with right. food bank lines increasing then this kind of stuff i'm afraid is just going to pour oil all over the the fire right. which at the moment is raging at the white house about the way they're running the country you're a multi-dimensional multimedia person so i read your column in the new york post about what led to your first episode with donald trump how he brought you into his office and said, hey, uh, Pierce, did you say all these things about me? And they were accurate. Someone given him a whole bunch of quotes of things you've said. Sabotage, right. Pierce. And you said, oh, oh, I have to try to save this interview. I got a crew outside. It's supposed to be my first episode. So I want to play this clip. For oh, this is not Trump. But before we play this clip, can I just uh, get your take on how you were able to get the interview and calm the former president down? Well, I've known Donald Trump a very long time, as you know, since I won his Celebrity Apprentice show in 2008. I've interviewed him maybe 35, 40 times, so I know what it's like to interview him. I've also, as a columnist, I, I worked out I'd written about 120 columns when he was president, and about half of them were supportive when many other people were not supporting him, and half were critical when I felt he deserved a whack. Uh, I think that's the kind of person that he thought he was choosing as his Celebrity Apprentice, someone who calls it as he sees it. And uh, I had an amazing interview with Trump, by the way. And this is it turned out to be 75 minutes, incredibly wide-ranging. We're actually going to run it over the first two nights of my new show, Piers Morgan Uncensored. And I think when people watch it, they'll all calm down, including Donald Trump. Because although we get quite heated about certain points, in particular his refusal to accept the results of the last election and what then subsequently happened on January the 6th. There are many areas where I agree with him, not least the way that he would have dealt with Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. So I do think that all those who've rushed in on the back of what I thought was a fantastic 
promo trailer yeah. for this interview seems to have got the entire world <laughs> going, which, by the way, is the point of a trailer. And when I was on The Apprentice, Donald Trump did that to me every night with his trailers. Yeah. So I wanted to get everyone to watch it. But when you watch it in totality, I think everyone can calm down. And actually, it's a really interesting interview with a man who, let's be honest, right now, if he decides to run again, may well win the Republican nomination and could well be president again, which would be the first time that's ever happened. So he's Second. a unique person in American public life right now. And I, I had a fantastic time with the interview. What did he say about Meghan Markle? Well, he said he wasn't a fan of Meghan Markle. Uh, he didn't like the way she disrespected the monarchy and the Queen, but he really tore into Prince Harry, who he called a complete embarrassment. He said it was terrible that he didn't attend Prince Philip's memorial whilst he'd gone to the Super Bowl and a Texas rodeo and then uh, popped over to Holland to go to the Netherlands to, uh, to put on his Invictus Games, but couldn't find time to go to memorial service for his grandfather. Right. He thought that was uh, terrible. Right. He was very supportive of the Queen. And Trump's a big Queen fan. His mum used to love the royal family of the Queen and he, he said how much he enjoyed meeting the Queen in London and so on. Not but he the band. ripped into Harry. He said that he is... Uh, he called him the most... Not the band, although he probably does like the band. Yeah. Um, but he, he said that Harry is the most whipped man in the world. I think we all know what he meant by that. Uh, he also said, I'm a great predictor. He thinks he's a great predictor. He thinks he's Nostradamus, uh, Donald Trump. But he said, I'm the great predictor. And he said, and I predict this marriage is going to end and <laughs> Harry will be returning to England with his tail between his legs, begging for forgiveness. So it was a very, very, right. as you would imagine, very full-on Trump interview. But that, those clips, I have to say, back in the UK right. have played out very well with the British public, almost all of whom will agree with him. I I'm can sure. tell you like doing a talk show. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Okay, so Pierce, you were just you were talking. Do we allowed to talk? Yes, <laughs> you do. Paid by the word. Uh, you know, and, come on, and, you can't get enough of my British accent. Come on, right. I love come that on. part too. Right. Sure. Okay, so we've all seen the the Trump promo that the former president took exception to, uh, for a, a a taste of what Piers Morgan uncensored like is going to be like in the future with people like Sharon Osbourne, who you've known in the past. Take a look at this promo. Piers and I had both been through similar experiences. Piers spoke about Meghan, and I spoke about the way I feel for Piers to have his freedom of speech. After all the big hoo-ha, all the mess online, I am back to talk to Piers Morgan about what really happened. What people can expect from the interview is the truth. And that's what people want. You defended people, her, and they tried to cancel you. People want the inside story. Well, you know, you know what I felt. I, what I felt about that was I got. Uh, kicked out of my morning show in the UK because Meghan Markle wrote to the boss of my company, ITV, demanding my head on a plate for disbelieving her, for having the audacity to disbelieve someone whose nickname is Princess Pinocchio. Uh, but if you remember what happened to Sharon Osbourne, she was hosting the talk for CBS and she lost her job from that. She was fired for basically saying I had a right to an opinion. That's she it. didn't even say she agreed with it. And I felt that was a, an egregious uh, censorship of her right to freedom of speech. So I have uncancelled Sharon. She's back on a show in the UK now called The Talk. And I actually, in the end of the interview, it's a great interview, very moving and very shocking about the way that she got treated, death threats and called a racist, all this kind of stuff, when there was no evidence for any of that. Uh, but at the end of it, I actually formally uncancel her. And that's <laughs> going to be the spirit of my show. I want to uncancel people. How do you do that? People How do you formally uncancel somebody? I literally had her in front of me. I said, Sharon Osborne, you are uncancelled. I played a clip of Ozzy Osborne singing Changes, and I announced she's about to host a right. brand new show called The Talk. So I have uncancelled her. And if there's anybody watching right now who's been unfairly cancelled by the Woke Brigade cancel culture mob, I am your saviour. I'm the British knight in shining armour on a big white horse, and I will save you and uncancel you. By the way, it applies to you three as well. Should anything happen in your career, I'm there right. for you. Especially Ainsley. I mean, you got to, you're going to be not. calling every day. Uh, so to Elon Musk, it looks like this is some relatively breaking news. It looks like a week ago where it looked doomed. Now Elon Musk is on the cusp of getting Twitter at $54.20 a share. He was able to get further investors, and this could be a done deal. If it is, in fact, if it, if it is in fact a done deal, like it looks like it's, uh, it's going to be, what are the ramifications of this? 
I think it's a good thing because I think Elon Musk is a, a absolute flag bearer for free speech. And he talks about this woke mindset virus. And I think he's right. It is a virus. Uh, if you go around wanting to destroy everything that, that, don't, that gets in your way that you don't agree with, then you become a really dangerous thing in a society. Elon Musk wants to return free speech. I think he recognizes that it's completely ridiculous, for example, that Donald Trump, and I discussed this with, with Donald Trump in the interview, that he is banned from Twitter, and yet people who still have accounts include Vladimir Putin, the supreme leader of Iran, and Taliban leaders. Now, how can that be right? How can it be justified it be. that a social media platform allows them accounts but bans Donald Trump? So I think you'll see, if Elon Musk takes control, I think you'll see a much more tolerant view of all manner of, of, of people's free, right to free speech, not just on the left, but also on the right, who tend to be the only people that get no platformed by Twitter and Facebook. But And you know what, Pierce, you have just described essentially... Elon Musk would be following your lead on your show on Fox Nation. You will be uncanceling people. And if Elon Musk takes over, he will uncancel people who've been canceled by Twitter. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I would do if I was him is I would uncancel Donald Trump from Twitter. And I would make the point I've just made. You can't well, allow Vladimir Putin an account and not the ex president of the United States. It's completely nuts. And it was driven, it's clearly politically motivated. And I also discussed with him this outrageous situation we had with the New York Post uh, uh, splash right. story uh, just before the election about Hunter, Hunter Biden's laptop. And I said to him, you know, it, it seems to me completely outrageous that Twitter censored that story, that mainstream media media joined in and said it was Russian disinformation. And now the very same mainstream media are saying, actually, it was all true, legitimate story. Well, in which case, why didn't you investigate it at right. the time? And that, in a way, I made the point to Donald Trump that although I completely disagree with him that he had the election stolen uh, illegally by voter fraud, because he hasn't produced, to my mind, the evidence, actually, he'd have a much better argument right. if he said, you know what, the suppression of that story on Hunter Biden's laptop could have tipped the right. election my way. And I think that's a really valid point, mm -hmm. which we can all agree with. And again, I come back to Elon Musk. Is he likely to allow Twitter, if he controls it, to literally censor a true right. story? I don't think he will. Pierce, you are well rested. I mean, now that you're to a morning show, you are so <laughs> shot out of a cannon. Every time, this is what life would be like if we actually didn't do the morning show and we got six hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep. You know what? I feel your pain. I feel your ah. pain when you do a morning show. People have no idea the time you guys get out of bed, right. how hard it is to be high energy right. early in the morning. I am living proof to all three of you. There's <laughs> life after a morning show. And it's life where you don't look half dead. You've got energy. You're bursting to go every day. Look at you. Look, look at we, me and see I mean, the future. We could have taken a shower and during this And we look half dead? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We, we, could have taken, yes. we could have taken a shower during Pierce, this segment Pierce, because he is so fired up about Pierce, his you probably stuff. got in trouble in school for talking too much, right? But look at you. Now you get paid to do it. You're doing a great we, job. Well, you know what? I used to... I actually used to be thrown out of my local pub in my village in, in the Shocker. south of England that takes a lot. every weekend Why? For, getting too, for getting too noisy in the pub <laughs> and arguing too loudly. Can you believe that? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. hundred percent. I side with the bartender who tossed you. <laughs> All right. Check him out on Fox Nation. Piers Morgan Uncensored premieres today. Go to foxnation.com for more. Piers, thank you very much. Thanks, Have a great Piers. afternoon and evening there in London. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, sir.